I was doing some research for a video on Minolta XC1, which led to Sony's purchase of Minolta's assets. I typed, did Sony, and before I finished the sentence, Google completed my question as, did Sony ever make a 35mm film camera? I was intrigued and selected that question to see what comes up. The first result said, Sony is the one major imaging company that has never built a film camera, having leaped straight into the DSLRs in 2006 after buying Minolta. Then it talks about a hobbyist who's created his own Sony E-mount 35mm film camera. Well, that wasn't really the question. The second result was from DP Review, a well-trusted source over several decades. This is a little encouraging. Someone says, I saw one used for sale and found it kind of strange. Never saw a Sony in 35mm. Just curious. Okay, it's a possible lead. The next one says, Sony did produce an unusual 35mm camera in the 1998 time period called the D700. There's a link. Hmm, that's encouraging. Nope, this is an early digital camera. Good looking one too. Let's see if people on eBay know something. The crowd wisdom. This link is useless. Group of cameras bundled. Let's do an explicit search for Sony film camera. Here's one. It says Sony Maxim Minolta. Yes, yes, yes. We know Sony bought the Minolta assets, but that doesn't make Maxim a Sony branded camera. Why go too far? Let's ask Sony, okay? Here's the Sony list since 1981. From the start, these all look like digital cameras. We have some of them here too, like this floppy Mavica and this very thin camera with Carl Zeiss lens, as thin as today's mobile phones. This cyber shot, this uh, extra thin camera, also with Carl Zeiss lens, and this sexy black one with Carl Zeiss lens and full HD, and this RX100, ours is Mark II. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Let's go and have a look at our shelves at Tech Heritage. Hello! What do we have here? Sony 35mm film camera? Now you know why that Google search triggered my investigation. This is a simple point-and-shoot film camera with flash and no zoom. It takes 35mm ISO 100 and 200 film. It's entirely made of plastic. It feels light and cheap in the hand. It takes two AA batteries for everything including film advance, flash and power rewind. It has an easy film loading mechanism like all the 80s and 90s point-and-shoot cameras. Put the film cartridge on the left side, stretch the film lead to the marked spot on the other side, make sure the film is straight and engages the sprockets at the top, then close the back. Ready to shoot without the flash or with the flash. The Google search, as we saw, was ambiguous, so we need to equip the best forensic minds with modern technology to look into this mystery and to give us a verdict. Is this by Sony or a complete fake? Let's proceed. We have this specimen. So I'm told we can search for similar items on World War, uh, uh, sorry, World Wide Web. We take a picture of this camera then upload to Google Image Search. Aha, the first choice that comes up is almost identical to our specimen. It's in India from India listed period com. As we can see, it's a real camera after all. Not so fast. If we look closely, we can see that it doesn't have the Sony logo. It's totally unbranded. In fact, the label says it all. Random camera motorized focus free 893 camera. Therefore, our sample must be the same, only with the Sony logo stamped on it. To the contrary, some camera companies actively work with the partners and subcontract the production and even the design of lower price products. For example, I present the evidence of Nikon FM10, which was built by Cosina, along with two lenses based on Cosina CT1 chassis. 
are we now supposed to say Nikon FM10 is not a Nikon or is it a fake? I submit there is at least the possibility that Sony had ambitions of entering the consumer camera industry and found a shortcut. It's even possible that they found a design somewhere in the Minolta unused design files when they bought the Minolta assets. Okay, that may be theoretically possible, but let's look at further forensic evidence. The picture of the manual shows a different camera front, but the same camera back and battery chamber. This proves that there was a generic design that was made with several different front plates to allow resellers to rebadge them as they wished, or not rebadge at all, like the Indian seller. Objection. If that's true, why would they go to the trouble of having all that multi-language notification stuff on the plastic packaging? That's something that only a major manufacturer would do. A generic manufacturer would just put them in simple packaging and send them off to the reseller. This shows that it must have some involvement from Sony. Our investigation indicates that this type of generic camera is not uncommon, and others are also baffled, as you see in this example. We have investigated ourselves and found plenty of examples offered for sale in a place called Alibaba. Here, they have helpfully indicated where you're supposed to put your own brand logo, such as Sony or Panasonic or whatever you want. Wait a moment. These are circumstantial evidence. We have the real object here. I submit that someone has gone to the trouble of putting all of these stickers here and there. Even at the bottom, it says patent pending. Would the producer of a generic camera go to that trouble? Why bother? This QC label can only mean Sony quality control was checking even if the production was outsourced to some lower priced Asian country. Again, not so fast. First, this label is clearly nonsense. There's no film cartridge with an opening flap on top. This simple number has no meaning. There's no barcode, alphanumeric, batch category, year of production, nothing. Sony is renowned for perfect use of English in all their product labels and literature. They would not write P pending, they would properly write patent pending. This has all the sounds of production by people who had no idea about the meaning of the words such as patent. Finally, if the quality control sticker is from Sony, why would they approve such shoddy work as misaligned details and bad molding? Nevertheless, these are all speculation. The best way to evaluate this is by design clues. For that, we have an expert witness with plenty of camera design experience to give his opinion. Can you please introduce yourself, Mr. Kolani? I invented Japanese design altogether. Can you look at this design and say if it's Sony or not? I searched through the Sony products and found this Cybershot camera. A truly beautiful piece of industrial design, probably inspired by something that I designed. Anyway, on the other side, we have many of the same design clues, the large concentric circles, much larger than the lens barrel would imply, then the deliberate intersection of other elements with those circles, the hint of a hand grip, not too obvious, and the overall minimalism, the simplicity. There is a definite Sony design influence here. But I cannot say for sure if it was by Sony or someone trying to copy Sony as others have done with my designs. Thank you, Mr. Kalani. Can we ask you, what's this half moon shape on the back of the camera? Well, I think it's most probably a small part of a large circle which would go over the back panel. For example, as part of a hand grip feature or something, I haven't really looked at the back of the camera. Here is the full back lid. As you can see, there is no circle. That half moon is totally irrelevant to the design of the back. What do you think now? Aha! This is just sloppy work. It means someone has designed the camera chassis with several different options for the front and back panels. In one of the models, the half moon would have matched up to the back panel and made sense. But in this model, it didn't. But they have not bothered to make a different version of the front panel. They just let it go. Very sloppy work. Thank you, Mr. Kalani. The only thing that can possibly indicate this is a Sony is the logo on the front. So we have a typographic expert. What do you think? I've looked at the iconic Sony logo, which is a special font, by the way, created for Sony. It's also identical to Cybershot. The other camera's printed logo is a different font, an ugly font, without what we call kerning, which means the letters are not properly spaced. 
The Sony font is narrow vertically, elegant, powerful, and simple. Below that, we have three different font styles. First line is in caps and italics. Second line, small letters. Third line, in caps but without italics. Sony was very careful with the typefaces and graphics in all their products. They're always simple, consistent, and beautiful. This is not it. Finally, Sony's logos in other products are usually raised or mirrored and very permanent. Your Honor, I ask permission to establish a pattern of behavior by the whole camera industry using several examples. Okay, but be quick, I don't have all day. Here we have a camera that looks generic with hardly any writing or badging of any kind. Here is another one. If you look hard, you see that it has the same type of oval shaped placeholder for a badge. Looking very closely, you will see a very faint Kodak. It indicates that Kodak has sold the naming rights to the producer of an inexpensive product, something that they have done many times. Here is a genuine Roli 35 camera. Here is another Roli. Just by looking at it, you can't decide if it's also genuine or a blatant fake or the naming rights were legitimately sold to another company. Here is a well-known Minox. But if you saw this version, which is completely blank, would you then say the other one must be a badged version of a generic camera? Therefore it's a fake after all? No, it was genuine. Here is a camera branded as Hewlett Packard. If you look around, you don't see a lot of Hewlett Packard cameras and you may conclude something is not right here. Obviously, they bought a camera design from someone and branded it under HP. There's nothing wrong with that. This simple printed text, firmly attached to the body of the camera, would imply this is a Leica camera. Nothing spectacular. But looking at the rest of the camera, you see that it's actually a Lumix. So, will you then conclude that it's a fake Leica? No. What about this one? You wouldn't immediately recognize this strange but beautiful camera. Looking further, you see several Hasselblad badges over it. Then you investigate further and you see Sony inside. Yes, Sony. It's a rebadged version of a Sony Nex 7 by Hasselblad. You may resist this fact and say Hasselblad wouldn't do that, surely. What about this then? This is a famous Hasselblad X Pan, very expensive and rare. Hasselblad and X Pan are proudly plastered over it. But how about this blank version? Would you immediately conclude that the other one must be a fake because it's this one plus a logo added? Amazingly, yes. It's actually Fujifilm TX1. Not only designed, but also built by Fujifilm. The Hasselblad version is at least twice the price. Does anyone care? No. It's well known in the photographic community. I conclude that this kind of behavior is everywhere in the camera industry. Every permutation of original versus generic versus badging has been tried. None of it implies that something either fake or not fake. You simply can't make a conclusion on that basis. Your Honor, I rest my case. Okay, that was a powerful comeback, but not enough. Thank you all for presenting the case for and against. Having considered the evidence, the verdict is that this camera is a fake Sony. But considering that to some extent they celebrated the Sony design language, I order that this item be preserved in a glass prison forever. History must be preserved whether it is good or bad.